Hi, welcome to chapter eight, trading income for partnerships. Okay, the first thing to think about is, okay, what is a partnership? Well, a partnership is simply a collection of sole traders. So if you think of a, a sole trader as one person, a partnership is simply two sole traders working together in some business to hopefully make a profit. How you allocate that profit? Well, you will agree your share based on your share partnership agreement. Normally 50-50, but you might have put different amount of capital in and you might have a, a, a different feeling of who gets what percentage of the, of the income. So profits are computed in exactly the same way as a sole trader. Take your profits per accounts and then adjust them for um, various things, uh, depreciation, etc. So same as a sole trader. And then what you do is you take the tax adjusted partnership profit and allocate it to each partner in accordance with the partnership agreement. One thing to think about important is Partners are entitled to a fixed element first from the pro from the profits. So what's a fixed element? Well, that could be salary or it could be interest on the loan. And these are withdrawn first. So I think the best way to do that is to do an example where Andrew and Barry are in partnership sharing profits equally after allocating a salary of 10,000 to Andrew. So in the year in December 2011, for instance, which is 11-12, the adjusted trading profits of the partnerships was 50,000 pounds. So how do you allocate the 50,000? Well, there's the total profit. What you must do first of all is put in the fixed cost. So salary has to go to Andrew. Then you take the 40,000 profit after the 10,000 or interest or whatever and simply allocate them according to the partnership ratio which means 20 20 thousand obviously this total must equal this total etc and that's they're going to be their taxing taxable income for 11 uh, December 11 which is part of 11 12 year assessment okay loss relief in partnership what happens here well trading losses are allocated between the partners in the same manner as you do a trading profit so if you'd have had a loss of 10 or 50,000 you do the same thing each partner can decide how they obtain their relief so the fact that you're um, Andrew um, and some other partner is Barry what you do with your loss is to, can be done differently to what Andrew does so partner A, Andrew, could carry the loss forward while partner B decides to offset against his current year total income. Purely up to whatever you want to do, because clearly everybody's different. Andrew might have investment losses, profits, um, Barry might have some future things he thinks he's going to have in the future and therefore the loss he wants to carry forward. Okay, so that's partnerships. Key points. Right, property income, another quite sort of straightforward um, chapter, quite short. Basically, property income represents income received by an individual from a property. You are usually called a, a landlord. The assessable property income on an individual is calculated as follows. It's rental income, say it's £12,000. You deduct your expenses, hopefully a, a certain expenses anyway, to come to your assessable property income. You do this on an accruals basis, so it's not a cash basis. And if you, as an individual, have more than one property, then the income expenses are combined in your calculation. The rules concerning whether expenses are deductible, so this bit here, it broadly follows the rules found within trading income. So if you've got depreciation, that wouldn't be allowable. 
and deductible expense would include interest on a loan to acquire the property, plus insurance, etc., etc. Okay, so those are the sort of rental income concepts. Losses on property are offset against any property income in the year of the loss. If there isn't enough income, then they're carried forward and offset against future property income. That's all they can go against. You can't do anything else with them. As opposed to furnished holiday lettings, where there's a bit more about losses. So um, property lettings which qualify as furnished holiday lettings, as it says here, a number of tax advantages because you can treat the loss, if you get one, as though they are trading losses and therefore can be offset against other income. So that's much more generous than the one we were talking about here. We can only have the property loss going against future property income. Furnished holiday lettings can be offset against other sources of income, so trading income, um, salaried income, etc. Now, to be furnished holiday lettings, there are, however, some rules which you need to learn. And they're in there. You must be available to let. You must be available to let for at least 70 days a year on a commercial basis, i.e. you're going to make a profit, aim to making a profit, and be available to let for 140 days. The other thing is no one person must have it for more than 30 days consecutively, so you can't just rent to a, a neighbour or a friend. Okay, and long-term lets must not exceed 155 days. So it's basically furnished holiday lettings is turning over on a regular basis your tenants. Now, another form of rental income is premiums. A short lease is a lease for 50 years or less. Part of the premium received will be treated as though it was property income received by the landlord. Now, what you do is, say there's a premium of £20,000 that you receive and the length of the lease is 15 years. What do you assess in year one that you receive the 20000 It's 20000 minus this little formula, 2% length of lease, which is 15 minus 1, knock off one year, times by the premium. So five six hundred is the answer in this particular example, giving you fourteen thousand four hundred as your property business income. Okay. Rent to room relief. This was introduced a long time ago to try and allow landlords, people who had houses where they had spare rooms to have take somebody in because there were lots of people who couldn't find accommodation so the, this rent a room uh, idea came out basically up to 4250 gross is tax free if you receive in excess of 4250 then the, you've got two options as the the landlord you can either option one choose to pay tax on the excess of the rent over 4250 or be taxed in the normal way for property income, which is basically your rent minus your expenses. And you would obviously choose whichever was the lower amount to be taxed on. So it is a, an all. Okay? It is an all. Rental room relief. But 4250 is the key number. It's been that number since it was introduced. It hasn't changed. I can't think how many years it is now, but it must be getting on for 20 years or so. And it's been 4250. Okay, that's the end of that chapter and the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.